Well hello everyone. I've been very busy lately. I've been having to go to some conferences that the Rural Domestic Economy Instructress has been giving us but I'm finally excited to say that I've been appointed the food leader of the village that I live in and tomorrow and the rest of the weekend I should be going out for the first time amongst people in the capacity of food leader. Very exciting. Now I've been presented with a badge that I can wear, my food leader badge, and I should be able to put official posters on my gateposts. What will my role entail as food leader? Well, I would distribute in the village any of the topical information that the Ministry of Food have sent to me to give out. I will arrange for demonstrations either in the village hall or in the Women's Institute market. Um, either myself will give the demonstrations or I'll arrange for visiting speakers to come in. And generally, I'll do all I can to help and advise my neighbours and other villagers on the spending of points and other food problems like that. Now, as food leader for the village, I've already distributed to as many who welcomed it the Ministry of Food Oatmeal Leaflet, which really is wonderful, packed full of excellent recipes using oatmeal. But the Ministry have also sent me a telegram recently of another oatmeal recipe which is the one that I'm going to try here at home now and I will be demonstrating it at Tenterton, that lovely town in Kent, not far away. I'm taking my trailer, my, my demonstration trailer, my hus husband has said he'll tow it for us. We've managed to get some fuel coupons from the Women's Institute and I'm going to be based over the weekend at Tenterton Station because I know there'll be a lot of people passing and a lot of people from the town will be coming to see my demonstrations on other ways we can use oatmeal. So if you're making this at home you'll need first of all about four ounces of stale bread broken roughly into breadcrumbs. It doesn't have to be really fine but just broken down into much smaller lumps and then put it in some cold water like I've done earlier to soak. When that becomes nice and soft squeeze the excess water out of it and pop it into another bowl. Now you could do this through a sieve or a strainer but I find it's just as good doing it through your fingers and your hands. Now oatmeal of course is one of those wonderful items that we have at our disposal which isn't rationed. It's one of our really valuable unrationed foodstuffs. And although I'm using bread, we do need to serve bread and take bread only when necessary using as much oatmeal as possible instead. Why is that you may ask? Well of course bread is made from wheat and we're having to import a good amount of wheat from our allies and that means it's coming on our ships. Whereas of course our oatmeal is home produced. It doesn't take up an inch of shipping space that really could be used better for vital war materials. So by taking too much bread, you're taking too much space on our ships. So try to limit the bread that you eat as much as possible. And of course, if it does go stale, never throw it to the birds. Do not waste it, use it in your cooking instead. So this is a really good recipe for also using up stale bread as well as using wonderful oatmeal. So that's your four ounces of bread soaked with the excess water squeezed out. I'm now going to add to that four ounces of oatmeal. 
pop that in on top of the bread and then we're also going to add some suet and of course this has a lot of protective food for you as well it's very good for you and helps our fat ration go a lot further two and a half ounces of suet I very luckily managed to get a packet of already shredded suet rather than having to grate what I could get from the butchers. So two and a half ounces of suet. We're going to season now some salt and some pepper and also I'm going to add some onion flavouring. Now you could either use very finely chopped onion or minced onion, spring onions at this time of the year I still have a few in my garden or you can use some of your freshest just pulled out leeks like I'm doing as well. Not too much, just enough to give it a little bit of an oniony onion flavour. Do remember to clean your mincer, it's always good to Pop a little bit of bread in there. So in goes your minced onion or leek. And I'm also going to add some parsley, of course, full of vitamin C. Now one of my friends told me the other day that parsley stalks actually has more vitamin C than the leaves so she said do make sure you use that in your cooking as well and don't pass the stalks by so pop in a good teaspoon I'm going to pop in all that I've chopped there it won't detract from the flavour of this at all adding a bit of extra parsley now give this a good mix and then we're going to also add some herbs, fresh herbs if you've got them or just a pinch of mixed herbs and of course thanks to the Women's Institute not only are they drying, collecting and drying medicinal herbs but they're drying culinary ones as well and on that subject ladies don't forget it's coming into rosehip season. So on that note, ladies, if you'd like to help the country and pick rosehips for a rosehip syrup, just pop to your Women's Institute or your food office and they'll tell you exactly how to go about it. Now, the liquid that I'm putting in here is not milk. I'm going to use vegetable water Cabbage, of course, is excellent. About a teacupful, and I'm going to pop into that and dissolve a teaspoon of savoury extract. Now, you could use bovril, yeast roll, marmite, whichever you prefer. Any of them will give it a lovely flavouring. Now, back to cabbage water, don't forget the children will love drinking cabbage water. It's delicious, they love it, and it's really good for them too. So do give them a cabbage water when you can. Now I'm popping that in. That's a teacup of vegetable water with the savoury extract. And then give all of this mixture a really good beat to get it as smooth as you can and get all the ingredients mixed together well. Now all we simply have to do next is to pop that into a grease tin into a moderate hot oven for about 40 minutes. Use a fork to wrap up the surface and give it a bit of texture too. So that's ready 
ready to go in the oven. It does smell good, even now. Now that's smelling lovely. 40 minutes is up. And there is a delicious, savoury oatmeal bake. Now serve this with hot gravy and vegetables as your main meal of the day or turn it out and allow it to cool and then cut into finger slices. These delicious fingers are just the thing to pack up for anyone who has to take a carried meal out. With hot soup kept warm in a thermos or a portable hay box made from an old respirator box, this will keep them going throughout the day.